obviously, if your country has had a military incursion here, and if you're actually losing ground on the West, you're going to be a little bit nervous about things. But tell me whose body language you think is more confident. Is it Zelensky, which we showed you a minute ago, or Vladimir Putin? The goal of the enemy was uh, to force us uh, getting jittery and moving the troops uh, from one sector of the front to another and stop our advance at the key front areas uh, in Donbass, first of all. And the advancement in these areas is our ultimate goal. Did they succeed? Nope, they didn't manage to, to succeed. Our armed forces stabilized the situation and started forcing the enemy out. And the second, which is most important, no actions uh, to contain our advance uh, took uh, place. Uh, more than that, uh, relocating their large and well-trained reserves, the enemy got weaker at the key fibers and uh, our troops accelerated our offensive and uh, we gained a, a lot uh, of territory. So you can see since the 6th of August, now a month in, as Zelensky pointed out in his comments, Russia has accelerated accelerated their movements in the east and it's interesting that he said something there that he has said in recent days as well it's really eye-opening to many in the west he said his primary focus and primary objective is the donbass taking the donbass has been the goal since the beginning of the war and it continues that way now even though his territory was penetrated in the Korsk area we would normally think that that would become the primary effort and we would move forces in to contain and then expel that incursion there. But he said, even right now, he is not going to be knocked off his primary objective, which is movement in the East. And so he even overtly states to the public, to his own people, as well as to the West, that this incursion is is my secondary goal. It's a goal. It's important. And he was telling the, the people of Russia uh, elsewhere in this uh, this conversation, I believe it was, that it, we are going to get them out. We are working on it. But then again, you have to get to what is the bigger goal for the Russians? Because uh, again, Zelensky re, uh, implied or reference rather that there had been a large Russian gathering in, in the uh, the north of their border around the Sumy area. Well, those aren't the troops that have contained the Kursk uh, penetration, and they're not very far away. So one would think that those, at least if those troops had been ready to attack into Sumy, that they would immediately be redirected over here to deal with that incursion here. But they didn't. So they're still where they were. What are they there for? Other reports have been coming out over the last several weeks uh, from the... Uh, the Wagner Group, you remember when Evgeny Prigozhin uh, and his uh, infamous uh, alleged coup attempt, whatever, where he was driving towards Moscow before he was stopped and then uh, mysteriously was killed a, a month or so later. Most people say, well, that's the end of Wagner. We haven't heard from him. Well, that may be the last time you've heard about Wagner, but Wagner has, has actually been accelerating uh, its recruitment in the area, like large scale acceleration in the Belarus area. We've also talked previously on our channel that the Belarusian army uh, has been massing on the Ukraine border. Those things are still there. The Wagner group has been getting this. I've, been, I've seen on social media uh, that a lot of the Russians have posted that they've seen large scale uh, armored vehicles for the Wagner group moving into the area. So we can see, keep seeing that, but you don't see it showing up on that Korsk area because it appears that Putin is, like I said, that's not our big problem here. And then he's also going to talk a little bit more confidently uh, after that com uh, comment that he made about the fact that he also recognizes that they're moving faster. Now, uh, you're going to have to read real careful on the bottom. This one is translated uh, in the uh, uh, text at the bottom in English, and I'll explain what it said afterwards if you haven't seen it. Watch this. Позавчера только, например, группировка Восток прямо в один удар треугольник захватила 7 на 5 километров. Очень успешно действует и группировка Центр на Донецком, на Покровском направлении. Там тоже исчисляются уже приобретения не сотнями метров, а квадратными километрами. 4 на 5, 3 на 5 и так далее. In that, if you can read it, he's reinforcing that they have been making gains recently in the five to seven kilometers in a single day or, or two to three kilometers here. Whereas he acknowledges, and we've talked about this in some cases earlier this year, especially even earlier in the summer, 
it was measured in maybe 200 meters, 100 meters, 500 meters, something like that. Relatively small gains in, in some areas, none at all. Some areas it would have been a week or two or three where there was nothing but lots of positional battles where no changing of, of territory. Now that's starting to change. So the question is, what impact is that having on the war overall? And what does the Ukraine side think of it? 